family that I'd like for you to pray about as we're standing. Emily be traveling in tomorrow. So, uh, uh, so uh, just remember Emily as she travels home from Gallatin. It's about three and a half hours. Uh, when I drive, it's about three hours and ten minutes when she drives. <laughs> and then Bryson. Bryson's not feeling well today. That's where they're at today. And and uh, been tested many times this week about uh, the different flus and streps and those things, but all come back negative. Uh, but just just remember him today. He's, start, he's, he's feeling a lot better than what he did Friday and, and yesterday. But uh, Psalms 100, you know, we have so much to give God thanks for. Uh, but like Brother Larry said, that stress gets in the way a lot, doesn't it? Ah, boy, that, that's, a, that's a message on its own. But let's read here today. It says, make a joyful noise. In verse 1, it says, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before His presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, He is God. It is He that hath made us, and, and not we ourselves. We are His people and the sheep of His pasture. Enter into His gates with thanksgiving and into His courts with praise. Be thankful unto Him and bless His name. For the Lord is good, His mercy is everlasting, and His truth endureth to all generations. Father, Lord, we're thankful today, Lord, for the testimonies that we've heard. Lord, we're thankful today, Lord, for, for the songs that we, that we have listened to and, uh, of, of God's been so good to us. And, and Lord, this is just our temporary home. And Lord, so many times how stress cloudies our vision. Lord, things of this world and, and things that we go through, Lord, just... Just overwhelm us greatly. Lord, may we look to you, Lord, the author and finisher of our faith. Lord, may we look to you knowing, Lord, that we have so much to be thankful for. And Lord, may we never forget that. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You may be seated. A couple ladies that I can remember growing up around. One was my grandmother. My grandma Race, we called her Mamma Race. I never heard her say one bad thing about anyone. We would say something now, they'd say, now Tim. Or she would give us a look, and we knew that we, need, we shouldn't, but I have never heard her say one word negative about anyone. The next person that I can think of was Sister Alma Atkins. Sister Alma Atkins is... She was a little shorter than what Sister Willie is. And she was always, she never, she could, never could drive. She didn't have a driver's license. She didn't have a vehicle. So she would ride the church van to church every time the church doors were open. You didn't have to worry about honking your horn for Sister Alma to get, and you didn't have to wait there 10 minutes. A lot of times, if the weather was nice, she would be standing there uh, at the gate waiting for us to pick her up. Or if the weather was like it was today, she would have the front door open and so she could look out the door while she was waiting there patiently for the bus to come. She was a widow at a very early age and raised three sons on her own. I never heard her complain about anything. But I heard both of these ladies sing the praises of the Lord. Both of them did. Both of them did not have very much money. They lived on a meager, meager uh, uh, social security. Uh, just, just a small pension if there was anything. But both of them had so much to praise the Lord for. Both of them, I know, are on in glory. They're part of that heavenly host that since, since we're compassed about with such great a heavenly host, let us, let's, he's saying, just keep on going because you have such a, a fan uh, cheering you on and pushing you on, saying it's not going to be easy, but it's worth it all. Those two ladies I know are up there, and they're part of that heavenly host. And they're part of those ones that in our hearts that are cheering us on. And they have so much to be thankful for. I've seen this, and I thought this was very, uh, very good to, be, uh, to, uh, to, to make known today. The number of times the word thanks or, or, re, or, or words related to thanks, like thanksgiving, thankfulness, those type of things. And this is how many times they're in the Bible. The word thanks is 75 times. The word thanksgiving is in 20 time, 28 times. The word thankful is three times. The word thanked 
is three times. The word thanksgiving is two. And the word, thanks, th- and the word thankfulness is one. We see many times as we look in, in God's Word and in the passages uh, of related to this, we see that all over all of this is 139 times that is related to all of this. And we see here in Psalms 100, it's a praise to the Lord. It's, it's not, a, it's not a, a, well, I've never heard that before, preacher. I'm not sure what that is. We have all had an understanding of what this passage is and what it does for us. Let's look at verses 1. What, what is the sound of thanksgiving? What is the sound of joyfulness? You know, I can remember when our kids, when they were small, I thought, boy, wouldn't it be nice if they could talk? They could tell us what they wanted. They could tell us what they needed. They could tell us what hurt. And then once they learned how to talk, I thought, boy, I wish they'd be a little bit more quieter now. But as they got older... I could hear them laughing. I could hear them taking up for one another. Now, they could have some knock-down, drag-out fights between themselves, Brother Tommy, but I'm sure you and your brother are the same thing. But if somebody says something against them, boy, they, it, it's not good. And we've had our talks about that, not condoning that. But the joyful sounds of home, you, you know what I'm talking about? Those things that we have. The joyful sounds that we have here at church. I love to see these children run up here. You say, preacher, they're not supposed to run. I know they're not being disrespectful. They're not playing tag in these churches. They're not climbing all over the pew. They're, this is how they learn. And even if they do play tag in here, we need to teach them how to act in church and what they don't know unless we teach them and they don't know unless they're here. So I'm glad when they're here. I'm glad when they... Run under the pews. Brandy is saying, you wasn't that glad when it was ours. <laughs> I'm thankful for it. But isn't it precious to hear a baby laugh? Boy, there's just something about a baby laughing. Boy, isn't it precious to these, these kids come up here and sing? Boy, I like to hear it. And boy, isn't it? That's, that's making our, uh, make, your, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. And uh, all ye lands, that's serving Him. That's sharing the goodness of what God's done for us. The testimonies that you all have done, Brother, Brother Scotty and, and, and the many others here this morning that has testified of the goodness of God. That's the sound of praises. The songs that we have seen, the song that I read this morning, I'm not my own church. When we realize that we're not our own, and when we've been bought with the price, there's something, there's a sound, boy, that just, just, just makes our heart glad knowing that He loves me when I was unlovable. His blood paid the debt of my sins. That ought to do something for us. That ought to give us joy. You know, so many times we're caught up in, well, what time is it? Well, preacher, you've got 15 minutes. Well, I've been here going on 10 years. And I try to let my get, I try my best to let you out here by noon. Sometimes it happens. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it's a little bit before, and I figure you ought to give me a little bit more if I go over. I've always been tried my best to be polite with God's time. But there's something about making a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. The sound of praises is precious. The sound of praises is knowing that what He's done for us. And what is the source of all this? How can we have all of this joy within us? Well, let's look here at, at, at verses 2 in the per- first part of this. It says, serve the Lord with gladness. Come before His presence with singing. We can serve Him. Why? Because what's the source of us wanting to serve Him? Listen, you, know, you, can, you can come in here and do every job in this church. But unless you have Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, it's for naught. Amen? It's for naught. I'm not saying it doesn't help out. But it's for nothing. We cannot earn our way into salvation. We cannot earn our way and and purchase our heavenly home on our own. It's already been purchased and all we have to do is accept it. But the source of that is our salvation. Over in Psalms 40, in verses, uh, uh, Psalms 40, 
Over in Psalms 40 and verses 3, I believe it is, uh, we see here today, what is that? It says, He hath put a new song. What that say? He has put a new song in my mouth. Uh, uh, even praise unto our God. Many shall see it and fear and trust in the Lord. He says He put a new song in us. What happened when He put a new song in us? He put a new song in us by saving us. He put a new song in us by giving us that source that I can sing praises unto the Lord. Thanksgiving. Brandy and I had a conversation about this yesterday. I said, we can have Thanksgiving with a Big Mac. And she looked at me like, but it's the truth. I'm glad we don't have Thanksgiving with a Big Mac. It's not that I'm too good for, I've ate a lot of Big Macs, you can tell but it's not the food that, that, that makes Thanksgiving special. It's not. It, it's not the pies. They're nice. I like them. But that's not what thinks, makes Thanksgiving special. It's as we gather together, whether it's one or whether it's two or whether it's 22, as we gather together, it's in our hearts and our minds of what God has done for us and where he's brought us from and where he's going to take us and the blessings that he just keeps giving over and over and over and over again. I love to hear Sister Alma Atkins pray. She would come around the altar. She had a real light voice. It was kind of high-pitched. Boy, when she, when she would get to praying, boy, it'd get louder. She didn't get, and she didn't get loud because, uh, because she wanted everybody to hear. She got loud because there was a source that was way down deep inside of her bones that realized that it wasn't what she could do or it wasn't what somebody else in this earth could do, but it was what our Heavenly Father had done for her and gave her graciously. We see here today, the source of our joy is our salvation. The source of our service is our salvation. We see here today it's the singing. In verses 2, the latter part of that, if we can see verse 2, it says, Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before His presence with singing. With singing. Oh, I love good singing. I love good singing. You know, I, I love to hear good parts when they come in and they start singing in different parts. I like that. There's something about the singing that thrills our soul. There's something about way down deep inside. Do you remember Paul and Silas? Paul and Silas over in Acts chapter 16 and verse 25, they had already been thrust into prison. You know, they had already been, uh, they, had already been beaten. Uh, they had already uh, been in the inner prison. Now, this wasn't a Pete Rose jail. Do you all remember Pete Rose? This wasn't a Pete Rose prison. You know, there wasn't anything like that. Didn't have their exercise machines. Didn't have, the, uh, didn't have their cappuccino machines. They didn't have all of this. They, this was an inner prison. This was a dungeon. The rats were probably bigger than what they were. Now, preacher, that, if it was vile, it was there. That's what I'm trying to get. But let's look at verse 25. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. And the prisoners heard them. They, why did they sing praises? Was it because of circumstance? No. Did, 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 the, did the beatings hurt? I'm sure it did. They were afflicted physically. They were afflicted, afflicted emotionally. Here they are, they had been serving the Most High God. They had went forth and, and Paul had gave up so much, but was given so much more. And here he is, his, his comrade in, in ministry was serving alongside and, and they were thrust in the prison. And a lot of us would have been, so you brought me here for this. You really think that, that I'm going to serve you after you've done me all this way? Is this really what service is all about? Listen, we're not going to have joy in the circumstance of everything that we have. Did you say, you know what I said, circumstance? But my joy doesn't 
lie in the circumstance. My joy lies in the, the Lord. My joy is not the trial that I'm going through. My joy is that I know I have somebody going through the trial that I'm going through. My joy isn't the great decision that I have to be made, but the joy is that I have peace about the decision that I'm going to make. And I know that that peace is going to be there. The joy, the joy is not in the death of a saint, but the joy is knowing where that saint is at. You see what I'm talking about? We will face trials. We'll face, we'll face enormous odds. But the joy... There's joy unspeakable and full of glory. The joy that I know that this is just my temporary home. The joy knowing that I know that one day He'll welcome me home. Yes, the trials here are hard. There's no doubt, and some of you all have, have, could write a book on those trials. You teach me every time that I see you about those trials and your encouragement to me. But I also see joy in your pain, not because of what happened, but because of who you serve and the source that you have in your life. That's what we have joy for. That's why we're here. Larry was talking about stress. A lot of us may be on blood pressure medicine because of stress. A lot of us may be on other types of medicine, maybe because of anxiety or depression or those types of things that many face. And it's real. It, it, it truly is. If you've ever had an anxiety, you know it's real. It's not put on. Somebody says, well, just, just, just suck it up. Sometimes it's just it's all you can do to breathe, Right? It's the facts. Stress can rob our joy if we allow it. Anxiety can take away and rob our joy if we allow it. The cares of this world that are so heavy, I'm not belittling, I'm not saying that, they're, that, 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 that you're making a big... The real... So the cares of this world are real. But yet, there's a God that's much bigger. Friend, you may not see just how big God is right now. And you may feel that the problems are just so overwhelming that God's nowhere around. But just stand still. Stand still and see the Lord work. Stand still and let Him know that you're trusting, and he'll let you know that you're there, that he's there. Paul and Silas could have run over in the corner and said, it's not me, I'm done. But Paul and Silas started singing. At midnight, they started singing praises, and they started asking the Lord, and they started praising the Lord so much, they weren't saying, oh, Paul, this, okay, Silas, let's start singing. All right, and they may have started, they may have been singing this psalm right here. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Or they may have been singing a song of, of the, Lord is, of the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. If they was an owl fly away, I'm sure they had have sung it on that day right then. Who don't want to fly away from prison, right? But they started singing, and the Lord started blessing. When the stress comes, Let's ask the Lord for strength to sing. When the anxiety comes, let's ask the Lord for comfort to sing. And let's trust in Him. We see here in verses, verses 2, it says, uh, Serve the Lord with gladness. How can we serve Him? Because we have a source. How can we sing? Because His presence is there. We see here today as we move on that He is the controller of what we have. He is the controller. In verses 3, and a part of that says, Know ye that the Lord, He is God. Know He is God. Know who He is. We are under His control. Aren't you grateful for that today? 
We may think uh, that, boy, that we've got this all under control and we may think that everything is going the way that we're supposed to be going and, and we may think that God is, is, is allowing us to operate our lives. Yes, we have a free will. Yes, we can choose to do His will or not to do His will. Yes, we can choose to sing if we want to sing or just sit over in the corner and pout if we want to pout. But we have something worth singing for today. We're not on our own. Uh, we are not just uh, uh, gotten saved and they've just placed us out in the bus stop with no else around and said you're on your own he has given us something today and he is in control over in Colossians chapter 1 and verse 16 it says for him by all things were created that were in heaven and that are in earth visible and invisible whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers all things were created by him and for him all things I like the book of Colossians. As he was writing to this church, he's wanting them to know, listen, you can't mix things of the world and you can't mix uh, things of your Jewish culture in with, uh, <coughs> pardon me, in with Christianity. It's Jesus and Jesus alone. That's all we need. In our walk today, church, it's Jesus and Jesus alone. That's all we need. We see here today in verses 3b that he's part of our ship, that, he is our, that we are his sheep. And a sheep knows their voice, right? The, the sheep knows the shepherd's voice. During this time, they would uh, maybe three or four different shepherds would, would corral their sheep into, into, into one fold. And, and there would be someone setting it by the gate, or possibly they would be the gate. And the shepherds would maybe set on outside around them. Tommy would have his sheep. David would have his sheep. Seth would have his. My sheep wouldn't know what Seth's voice is. I could holler for Seth's sheep all day and they wouldn't come to me. But if I bellered out, Oh, sheep! You know what they're going to do? They're going to start running. The neighbor across the road, boy, he probably had about 35, maybe 40 head of cattle, and I could tell when he started hollering. Boy, you, he'd, he'd have a big bellering voice, and, and the voice would follow, just flow up that holler. Oh! You know what them old cows would do? They'd start, they'd start running. You know why? Because they knew they was going to get fed. I'm sure Sister Faye, when she was milking the cows, boy, she had her own holler, right? All of us. If you had cattle, you know, Brother Tommy, I'm sure they may even know your truck when they pull up, don't they? They know what they're going to get. They're going to get feed. Maybe it's a stall. Maybe you pull, pull up and stand by a certain gate. Them cows ain't stupid. But the sheep knows the shepherd's voice. And it's a soft, tender voice that says, you're mine. And I know who you are. And I'm going to protect you. I'm going to provide for you. And I'm going to promise that you trust in me and there's a home in heaven. See, this passage right here of Psalms 100 is full of, of just little nuggets. It's full of goodness. We can see that what is the sound of, of, of praising? It's joyful. What is the source of our service? It's salvation. Why do we sing? It's because he's been so good to me. He's the controller. When we think that this world is just all, uh, uh, just all psychogged, did you ever hear that word before? Just all out, just all out of whack. We know that nothing has passed through His hands. We see here today that, in closing, in verse five, it says here it says the Lord is good. Listen to this. The Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. Now in my Bible, I've got good and mercy everlasting underlined. And I've got truth endureth underlined. Because if we're not careful, boy, things of this world is, is just going to start caving in on us, aren't they? Boy, if we're not careful, it's just going to start overwhelming us and overwhelming us and overwhelming us. The stress of this world, the depression of this world, 
the anxiety of this world, the uncertainty of this world, the changes that happen to our homes and to our families. If we're not careful, all of that will overshadow these three phrases. The Lord is good. He is mercy is everlasting. And His truth endureth. This allow the Lord of all the universe. This allow Him to move and to operate in our lives. And when trials come, didn't say if, when trials come, I think we'll be happily surprised in time what God can do for us. As we're gathered around the Thanksgiving table and you look around and there's no Big Macs, more than likely, all of us can say that there won't be any Big Macs unless we just want one. We have all the fixings. Remember, it's not about the fixings. It's not about the turkey. It's not even about the pumpkin pie. It's not about all the things that we love so much to eat. But it's about what He's done for us and the goodness that He supplied each one. Church, I don't know what you're going through. I don't know the battle you're facing. You may have been, you may have been fighting this for some time. And you may continue fighting it, but we just need to realize, like Paul said, your grace is sufficient. I prayed three times for this thorn to be removed. We don't understand. We could go into theological debate about what this is. What, what it, is. It, it, it doesn't matter what the problem was. The, 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 the whole theme of it is, is Paul understood that God's grace was sufficient. And it was still there, but God gave him the strength to go through. Our trials will still be there. But we need to have an understanding that God's grace is sufficient and He'll allow us to go through. Father, I praise You today. I thank You for this passage, Lord, that You've allowed us to, to read. And Lord, I thank You for the time, Lord, that You've allowed us to look at this and examine this. And, and Lord, I pray today, Lord, You take my frailties and Lord, make, big, make it big, Lord, we pray. Not, by, but not for me, not, not because, uh, but for Your glory alone. Lord, for your purpose alone, Lord, use it. Lord, I don't want to be seen, but Lord, I want the magnifying glass to be put on you and your word. Lord, I ask today, Lord, you give strength, Lord, through this time. Lord, you know each heart. And Lord, I praise you for all that you do for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As we all stand this evening, this morning, if we need to